If your first steps in the morning feel like walking on broken glass, you're not alone. But what if I told you most people are being told the wrong way to fix it? In this video, I'll show you what's really causing your heel pain and walk you through a three-step fix backed by real science. No surgery, no gimmicks, no $400 shoe inserts. Let's fix your feet for good. The first step in this process is to understand how the injury started in the first place. For that, I reached out to Dr. Ray McClanahan, a sports podiatrist and expert in the field of foot-related injuries. The number one problem that presents to podiatry offices in America is heel pain. The most common diagnosis up until recently that we would have given that heel pain is plantar fasciitis. About six or seven years ago, Dr. Harvey Lamont from Philadelphia who is not only a podiatrist, he's a dermatopathologist, took 50 patients of his that did not benefit from traditional podiatric care. He actually operated on them for heel pain. And during that operation, he opened up the inner part of the heel where most people with plantar fascial pain will hurt. They'll typically hurt in this area through here. They'll typically be most painful when they first get out of bed in the morning. They'll have to walk around a little bit till their foot warms up, then they'll be fine. So Dr. Lamont took 50 of his patients. He took a piece of their plantar fascial ligament and looked at it under the microscope. And what he found was quite interesting. He didn't find inflammation as he suspected. He found dead tissue. Most folks who are reading the literature who are treating heel pain are aware that the problem is no longer thought of as an inflammatory problem, but more likely to be representative of a localized circulatory problem. How in the world would a person, especially some of the young people who developed this, get a piece of dead tissue in their heel when we can feel the pulses coming into their foot? The pulse behind the ankle is the tibialis posterior pulse. The pulse on the top of the foot is the dorsalis pedis pulse. These people will have plenty of blood flow coming into their foot, so it won't make sense then why they'll develop a piece of dead tissue until you consider one important feature, and that is this particular muscle here on the inner part of the foot is called the abductor hallucis, and it's called that because its intended function is to abduct the hallux, the hallux being the medical term for the big toe. In an ideal world, when we're first born, this muscle, the abductor hallucis, is in perfect balance with the adductor hallucis, which attaches to the inside of the big toe and a little floating bone on the bottom of the first metatarsal called a sesamoid. However, in America, we do not appreciate this intricate balance between these two muscles. We put our children into footwear early on in life that takes away from their natural foot configuration and encourages the big toe to go over towards the second toe. What that does at the level of the foot here is it causes the abductor hallucis muscle to become a strangulating force on the blood supply coming into the medial heel and the blood supply leaving the medial heel. In other words, the rest of the foot will get nourished, but because this particular muscle, the abductor hallucis, partially cuts off blood supply, there's a localized area, generally in this vicinity, where people will de literally develop dead tissue or fasciosis. This is very easy for people to understand when you can show them the muscle that's responsible for the problem getting tight when you move their big toe into the position that most footwear holds it in. The abductor hallucis muscle is a triangular shaped muscle here that becomes a tendon here and attaches on the big toe. In an ideal world, that muscle would be short and strong and holding the toe where it belongs. We don't live in an ideal world. Most of us by the age five or six have already begun changing the natural shape of our big toe. And why this eventually develops into plantar fasciosis will be easily seen if you can see what the muscle is about to do as I move her big toe into shoe position. And by the way, as I mentioned, the blood supply coming in is right here, tibialis posterior artery, but it's got to go under this muscle. Take a careful look at what this muscle does as I move her toe into shoe position. It's subtle, but if you could see right there, you can see that as we move her toe into taper and toe spring, which are the two design features that are built into the toe box of most shoes, including athletic shoes, her abductor hallucis muscle is going to pull tight against the blood supply coming into the foot as well as the venous blood supply going out of the foot. Correspondingly, it's subtle, but you can also see as I reapproximate the big toe position, the abductor hallucis muscle goes from tight to pouching out. Once again, shoe position, strangulation, dead tissue, natural foot position, 
opens up the muscle, lots of blood flow in and out of the foot. So the most important treatment for plantar fasciosis is to get into a shoe that allows your foot to be in its natural position. These are shoes that are completely flat, called zero drop shoes, widest at the toes, meaning they have a wide toe box, and flexible. You should be able to twist your shoe easily. If you can't, it's way too stiff and your foot can't move naturally within it. Shoes with these three features will prevent the plantar fascia from being constantly stretched and allow for natural toe movement. Next, grab your shoes and try this test. We're going to see if your shoes have a wide enough toe box. Pull the sock liner insole out of your shoe. Take your sock off and stand on top of it. Many people who develop heel pain will have parts of their foot, even in a wide width shoe, fall over the edges of that liner. This means in order for your foot to fit within that shoe, your toes must be crammed together. Not only does this position affect blood flow to the plantar fascia, as we've discussed before, but it instantly hinders foot stability. Notice how easy it is for the foot to move into excessive pronation in the arch to flatten out when the big toe is in this smashed position. However, if we allow the big toe to splay back out in the position it should naturally be in, not only can we restore blood flow to the bottom of the foot, but notice how much harder it is for the foot to collapse over into excessive pronation. Ideally, a barefoot style shoe like the one I developed with Tear will check all of these boxes for a good design, allowing your foot to function in its natural position. However, if walking in a shoe like this is still painful at this time, consider a short-term transition shoe that still has a foot-shaped design, zero drop, but has some cushion like the conventional footwear you're used to. You can find links to shoes like that in the show notes after this video. While switching shoes is a key part in fixing foot pain, many would also benefit from a rehab program that rebuilds foot capacity through restoring flexibility to tight muscles and strengthening weak ones. The program I'll show you today will include two self-massage techniques, two stretches, and two strengthening exercises. To start, Find a small ball and roll it slowly on the bottom of your foot. If you come to a spot that's painful, stop and hold this pressure for 10 to 20 seconds before moving off that tender area. After a few minutes of rolling, stand up and see if your symptoms are any better than before. If so, this can be performed a few times a day as a helpful way to manage your pain. It can also be helpful for some to foam roll their calf muscles. Start by moving slowly up and down the lower leg until you find a tender area. Pause on this area and tack it down with your opposite leg for 10 seconds before moving to another spot. You can also add in some ankle pumps during this pause to increase the effectiveness. Spend a total of one to two minutes on the foam roller if you found these tissues to be particularly tender or sore. Now we move into the stretches. Start with the muscles on the top of your foot called the toe extensors. These muscles are often short and stiff when the toes are constantly elevated off the ground in shoes with toe spring. In a seated position, pull one or both feet behind you. Next, pull your heel back towards the ground. This should bend or flex your toes underneath the foot and bring out a good stretch to the top of the foot. As this flexibility improves, the plantar fascia on the opposite side of the foot can relax. Hold this position for 10 to 30 seconds before relaxing. It is common at times to have the arch of your foot cramped during the first few stretches. Just know this is normal and will get better with time. Now, chances are you've been told to stretch your plantar fascia. Many doctors even prescribe boots and socks that maintain your foot in a stretched position throughout the night. This recommendation is based on the idea that the plantar fascia is stiff and tight. However, this is incorrect. Modern footwear lengthens this tissue by raising your heel and toes from the ground. So rather than trying to stretch something that's already over lengthened, we need to focus our attention on the opposite side of the foot with the toe extensor stretch. The next stretch to perform is for the adductor hallucis muscle that adaptively shortens over time when the big toe is held in an angled position within bad shoes that have a narrow toe box. We'll simply call this the bunion stretch. Start by pulling your big toe out to the side away from your other toes in abducted position. Next, you're going to take your thumb and slowly push into that area between your first and second metatarsals. You'll likely feel a small tender area. This is the adductor hallucis muscle. Put pressure into this tender spot as you pull the big toe out to the side and hold that stretch for 10 to 30 seconds. Now it's time to strengthen your foot. This first exercise is called the toe scrunch. Place a small towel roll on the ground in front of you or a small ball and position it under your toes. Next, 
Attempt to grasp the towel or ball with your toes and pull it towards your heel. Make sure your heel does not pop off the ground during the squeeze. Hold it for a few seconds before relaxing. Perform 10 to 20 reps for two to three sets at a time. Next, let's find some rubber bands. Start in a standing position and place the band around your big toe. Then take a step sideways and plant your foot into the ground, holding for a few seconds before then coming back. The band pulling sideways will help ensure your big toe is spread away from the other toes and into its natural position in line with the metatarsal bone of the foot. After you integrate these exercises into your program, also find time to walk around your day completely barefoot or in a barefoot shoe. This will allow the joints of your foot to bend and move as they were designed and allow the small muscles of your foot to engage properly. It is normal for the arches of your feet to feel a little tired or sore after this. Don't freak out if this happens. It's a sign that those muscles are finally working hard. On top of changing your shoes and starting this rehabilitation program, the third step that we can take for a complete resolution of your pain starts by using a few unique tools. The first is a silicone toe spacer Dr. McClanahan invented called Correct Toes that help align the toe bones to where nature intended when you were born. They easily fit between your toes and are designed to be worn within a wide toe box shoe while you move throughout your day. In restoring proper alignment, Correctos help you restore proper length to the abductor hallucis muscle and therefore blood flow to the bottom of your foot. Some people also benefit from a metatarsal pad, which helps shorten the tissues on the bottom of the foot as opposed to stretching them, which we found out isn't optimal. There are two recommended types. Pedag metatarsal pads are designed to be worn inside your shoes. Struts metatarsal pads are best when barefoot as they wrap around the top of your foot. Regardless of which you choose, be sure to place the pad directly under the ball of your foot. All right, you've got your rehab program, tips for shoes, and a few new tools that you can start using to fix your heel pain. Drop a comment and let me know how you progress with this new method. And subscribe to this channel for more tips on how you can stay pain-free. Let's heal our heel pain together. See you guys in the next video.